CTCL, uh, cutaneous T cell lymphoma, it's a rare uh, disease that uh, is, you know, often, um, you know, patients uh, will have a um, condition where they have had uh, skin rashes on their skin for many years. Uh, patients generally uh, have a delay in their diagnosis because they look commonly like eczema or psoriasis uh, until they start to get worse and the dermatologist uh, or their doctor uh, is concerned that maybe this may not be uh, eczema or psoriasis as it progresses, and then the biopsy is done and it shows that they have lymphoma in the skin instead rather than just eczema or psoriasis. So um, it's very rare because um, most um, you know, doctors, most dermatologists tell me that they probably come across the diagnosis maybe once or twice in their entire career. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think in the U.S., the data says it's about like five or six um, cases per million uh, in the population. So very rare condition um, uh, overall. Now, uh, lymphoma as a whole is not that uncommon, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, which is what cutaneous lymphoma falls under. Uh, but Lymphoma involving the skin is very rare. Uh, most of the time, lymphoma involves the lymph nodes. It's where generally uh, lymphocytes, which are the malignant cells, uh, are located. But in cutaneous T cell lymphoma, the lymphocytes are not in the lymph nodes. They are actually residing in the skin, which is a very rare site for involvement. Uh, so cutaneous lymphoma is uh, you know, a big umbrella term for um, different types, subtypes of, uh, you know, uh, lymphomas that can be in the skin. Now, when you hear the term lymphoma, um, it's sometimes uh, not that helpful for the clinician because there's more aggressive subtypes and there's uh, subtypes that are a little bit less aggressive. And um, it's important that when you uh, do see your doctor, your oncologist or dermatologist, that they are able to separate the different subtypes because some of them are very indolent, meaning that they can be on the skin for many years and come and go. Sometimes they don't, um, you know, progress rapidly. Uh, other types are more aggressive. So within two or three months, you could have, um, you know, progression from a small little, you know, spot to a very big tumor. So um, it's important to decipher the specific subtype you have. Uh, and there are many different subtypes, which I will go into in just a minute. But um, Overall, it's important to make sure that you, know, you do determine the right subtype that you have because the treatment uh, is different for the different subtypes. Now, the most common subtype of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma is mycosis fungoides. Um, it has a name that you know, most patients come in to tell me it sounds like fungus infection, but uh, and maybe that's what it looked like you know, way back when, when people were naming things, uh, but actually it is a lymphoma in the skin. Now, lymphoma is a cancer of your immune system. So your, the lymphocytes are you know, involving the skin and um, they're malignant in the skin. So what happens is that those cells are proliferating in the skin. They're made in the bone marrow and they're tagged to go to the skin. So they're home to the skin and they stay there. Uh, and they are uh, clonal appearing. So they all look similar under the microscope. So that's how the diagnosis is made. Um, so you know, importantly, a skin biopsy is helpful to determine um, you know, the diagnosis, but the biopsy in and of itself sometimes is not that helpful to determine the subtype. The subtype usually is a combination of clinical and pathology correlation so that you can kind of combine the two uh, techniques to determine the subtype. So sometimes when you see a patient, they might have a T-cell lymphoma on the biopsy report, but um, you know, that could range from mycosis fungoides to a uh, aggressive uh, gamma delta T cell lymphoma. So the biopsy, you know, if you suspect a gamma delta T cell lymphoma, which is a subtype, aggressive subtype of T cell lymphoma, you need to ask the pathologist to do special stains for you to determine, you know, if this is indeed a gamma delta type. Uh, because, you know, if you go into the room and the patient says, oh, this patient is rapidly progressing, has tumors everywhere within two months, that is not the typical picture of mycosis fungoides, which is a more indolent type. And so those patients generally need to be uh, tested by the pathologist to look for the specific subtype. Uh, and then if it's confirmed that they need to be, you know, receiving more systemic aggressive therapy. Um, whereas on the flip side, mycosis fungoides, a more indolent subtype of T cell lymphoma, those patients are treated generally with more uh, milder treatments, usually starting with skin directed therapy first. Um, and then if they do progress beyond the early stages of disease, then they are treated with systemic therapy as is indicated.